Guys, today we'll discuss the respiratory physiology. So, within few minutes, you'll get to know what is the basic anatomy of lung, and what is the characteristic feature of lung, and also the chest wall, and how they are related with each other. And then we'll discuss the one of the clinical aspect which is very important, that is calculation of intrapleural pressure. And then we'll discuss what are the lobes, and how, what are the segments, and how the radix is different from the right lung from the left lung and then we'll discuss what is the bronchiopulmonary segment and how the arteries and veins are related with it. So here we go. So the first one is the basic anatomy of lungs. So the basic anatomy of lung is the first one we have the lung is a parenchymal organ. So it is enclosed in two different cavities. So one is the pleural cavity and the other one is chest cavity. So the chest cavity and the pleural cavity are the only the are the only chest cavity are the only cavities which are present in the lungs and the, the lungs having the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. As we know visceral is mentioned just because the pleura which is being attached with the viscera of lung. So we call it as visceral pleura. And the parietal pleura is attached with the chest wall. So we call it as parietal pleura. So the space between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura is called as or termed as the intrapleural space or the pleural space. So what is and this is called the diaphragm as we all know and now we'll quickly go to the landmark and the lung margin and the pleural margins of with respect to the lines of the anatomical lines so firstly we'll go with the the landmark of subclavicular line so the lung margin the lung ends at the Sub, in the subscapular line, the, the lung margin ends at the 6th rib and the pleural margin ends at the 8th rib and with respect to the sub axillary line, the lung margin ends at 8th rib and the pleural margin ends at 10th rib and the sub scapular line the lung margin ends at 10th rib and the pleural margin ends at 12th rib so here is a trick to just go and how, how to remember the um, landmarks of the lung and pleura the pleural margin end is the lung margin for the sub sub axillary line and this pleural margin is the lung margin of subscapular line so this is one of the trick to just remember or simply we can remember this this is so easy and then now we'll go with what are the characteristic features of the lung and what are the characteristic features of the chest so the chest always want to compress itself into the what is whatever the smallest size it can compress the elastin present in the lungs makes this possible and what about the chest cavity the chest cavity always wants to expand its nature it's the the nature of the chest wall is it always wants to expand its its uh, volume so so what's making this two attached to each other and what is making them to be attached so that they can function together and linked with each other that is the pleura the pleura is like the two glass lights uh, attached to each other with uh, with a small amount of water present between them so this makes the sticky nature of the two glass lights just like that the pleura the visceral the parietal pleura and the chest wall are being attached to each other like two glass lights making them each other to be sticked each other so that the pleasure the pressure always goes, the intrapleural pressure is always negative in the normal steady state.
ऑलवेज नेगेटिव एक्सेप्ट इन सम एक्सेप्ट सम केसेस ऑफ एक्सपायरेशन और फोर्स्ट एक्सपायरेशन सो विल डिस्कस दिस इन ए वेरी डिटेल वे इन फर्दर वीडियोज सो नाउ विल अगेन कम टू वन ऑफ द क्लिनिकल एस्पेक्ट विच इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू नो दैट very interesting to know is how to determine the intrapleural pressure so the intrapleural pressure is being determined by the balloon catheter so that is the balloon catheter with lead of manometer so what is this balloon catheter is will insert a balloon catheter in the esophagus of the patient the other one who need, who need to be examined so this is a deflated balloon and this is a manometer which we already i have drawn this for the ec and then the after going the after allowing the catheter to enter the lower mid lower one third of the esophagus lower one third of the esophagus the balloon need to be inflated so that the oral cavity is being disconnected with the nasal cavity and so that there will be no connection with the air so the pressure which is being developed here is due to the medial mediastinum the mediastinal pressure which is been under the pressure of esophagus will be developed under this pressure this pressure which is been acting upon the esophagus of lower one third is called the intrapleural pressure or the measured pressure here is called the intrapleural pressure so this pressure which is been acting upon the lower one third of the esophagus is called as the intrapleural pressure which is been developed by the medial mediastinum so this is how we will calculate the intrapleural pressure so this is the clinical aspect of my video and then we'll go with the lungs so the lung the lung basic lung anatomy is the ob what are the lines what are the different lines which divide the lung into different lobes and what are the segments present in it so here we go the first one is the medial the first one is called the horizontal line which is only present in horizontal fissure better called as horizontal fissure and then we have the common fissure which is the oblique fissure it is present in both of the lungs oblique fissure which divides the left lung into the upper and the lower lower lobes and what is the uh, the horizontal fissure divides the lung into the upper and the middle and also the oblique fissure which is been dividing the lung into the lower fissure or the lower lobe so the upper lobe middle lobe and the lower lobe is in the right lung so the lung the right lung has three lobes so what are the lobes the upper lobe middle lobe and the lower lobe so these lobes again have segments the upper lobe have three segments so the upper seg the segments are apical anterior posterior and the middle have two segments that is medial and lateral and the lower one have five segments those are apical basal anterior basal posterior basal medial basal lateral basal so this is these are the segments these are the lobes of right lung and these are the segments in the right lung 
so these are very easy to remember just because these three we these three these five and these five these five are the repetition of adding just the basal part for the upper and middle segments of the upper and middle segments of the right lung so so just like that the left lung has two lobes the upper and the lower the upper lobe has again the five segments the apical anterior posterior medial and lateral and again plus all these added with basal so this is so easy to remember like this and these are the lobes and these are the segments so the next part is the difference between the right radix and the left radix so the radix is nothing but the medial part of the lung so as we know this is the lung so this part or the root of the radix so this is the place where the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura meet and now we'll see what are the differences in the right radix and the left radix which is also called as hilum of the hilum of the lung so here we go always we need to remember that the pulmonary veins always the pulmonary veins stay at the bottom this is from upside down we are seeing the or we are assuming as upside down or this is the up and this is the down and uh, so the bronchus so here i need to mention something that what why i did draw the bronchus in a different way or the size of the bronchus in right is larger as compared with the left that is because the anatomy of lung or the bronchus is the diameter of bronchus in right radix is more as compared with the left left radix this is the anatomical significance of bronchus in right and left difference of the radix present in the bronchus and the bronchus is uh is in superior portion of the artery in right radix and in the inferior portion of and the inferior portion in the left radix so this is how the radix of right and left lungs are differentiated so always we need to remember that the pulmonary veins always have occupy the bottom position of the radix and now and we so there is some other some more information is we have lymph nodes present here hyla lymph nodes and then so these are the this is the main important differences between the right and left radix and now we will go to the bronchial pulmonary segment so what is this bronchial pulmonary segment is the bronchus the tertiary bronchi this is the tertiary bronchus bronchus or bronchi so this tertiary bronchi is been surrounded by the pulmonary artery and this is pulmonary vein so this is so easy to remember the pulmonary artery is always intrasegmental and the pulmonary vein is always intersegmental so in between is called intersegmental and intrasegmental is why the pulmonary artery is intrasegmental and why the pulmonary vein is intersegmental it is not just because they said and we will remember like this it's nothing like that it's so easy to remember just because the pulmonary artery is carrying the 
deoxygenated blood so this deoxygenated blood which is been carried through pulmonary artery need to be get oxidized at tertiary bronchus or the alveoli as we know the the only process through which the deoxygenated blood is converted into the oxygenated blood is through this process which is the respiration so this is how the bronchial pulmonary segment is being explained here so this is my first video and my so this is the instagram of my drug to medico come and follow there i'll see you there bye